Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I usually wait a second to see myself actually go live to make sure everything is functioning properly. Let me know real quick if the sound is okay, and then we'll get started. All right, looks like everything is good. Looks like I am uh, talking. I see my pretty face over here. <clears throat> um, as everyone can see, I am here with Pastor George Sayek. Now, normally when we have guests here um, on my channel, it's usually uh, apologists, mainly people, other people from YouTube. Now we have Pastor George Sayek on here. Uh, those of you may have seen uh, last month, we did a fundraiser for Pastor George and lots of people got behind that. Um, everyone who knows George knows knows that he's doing uh, amazing work. And uh, as we as we go on here, we'll we'll tell you guys about a, a conference that's coming up in California that George hosts um, every year. And um, if you're anywhere in the area, or even if you can travel there, you'll want to make it to that. So uh, we'll have those details for you here in a few moments. But Pastor George, how you doing? Very good. Thank you for having me with you today. Uh, Pastor George, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your ministry and what you do and how you spend your time? Okay. Um, our ministry is Ministry to Muslims uh, Network, uh, our website, ministrytomuslims.com. Uh, from the title, you can tell we are reaching Muslims with the gospel uh, across the United States. Uh, we do a lot of work in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, in Seattle, Washington, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, California, mainly uh, most of the work we do here in California. Um, and uh, one of the things we do is to arrange public debates. Um, since 2007, our first uh, public debate was uh, Sam Shimon and Nadir Ahmed. Uh, then a couple of years later, I was so excited to meet David and uh, Dr. James White. They came and also did some debates for us. Um, we did some debates in England uh, with Nabil Qureshi, David, and Dr. James White. debated quite a few Muslims over there. Uh, it was really awesome. Uh, we did uh, some debates in Toronto, uh, not Toronto, Canada, actually, Ottawa, uh, Canada, uh, with Tony Costa and, and Nabil. Uh, and Farhan, Quraysh at that time, and mm -hmm. <laughs> Osama Abdullah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, mostly and that, and that's, here in, that, that's back. Huh? When, that's back when Farhan was still a Muslim. Yes, yes. And actually, I, uh, between the debates, uh, uh, mistake, uh, by mistake, the camera was still on. It was uh, recording a debate between Osama Abdullah and Farhan Quraysh. I would love to get Farhan's permission <laughs> and show it sometime. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> This would be fun, uh, but um, yeah. We, but mostly, mostly every Friday we have teams to go to the mosques. Uh, we stand outside these mosques, uh, and Muslims finishing their prayer, coming out. We hand out uh, gospel material to them. We are open for discussion and debates in the public sidewalk. Um, and we've been doing this uh, since uh, 2001, few months before September 11. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was, uh, I was in Anaheim, California, which this area in part of Anaheim, we call it Little Arabia. I was at this uh, shopping center, very crowded, very busy, Muslims all around me. And I looked across the street and I found this empty big lot. And, and immediately I saw a vision of a big tent, uh, like a Christian book fair, and Muslims coming to hear the gospel. I, I ran across the street and I found the owner, his next door, uh, doctor and I went to him and uh, he found, I found out he's a Christian. He offered me the land to use for book fair, but also he offered me a location as an Arabic Christian bookstore. And uh, what a timing right before September 11. And mm -hmm. when September 11 happened, uh, I have the sign in the top of my store called Arabic Christian Education Center. Uh, that uh, sign is that attracting uh, Christians have a heart and desire to reach out to Muslims. Uh, also, it's that attracting Muslims who want to know about Christ uh, to come to me. And mm -hmm. immediately after September 11, we started the weekly mosque outreach. And mm -hmm. since then, we are continuing to do that. Mm -hmm. now, now, George, um, <clears throat> if I were walking out of church and I saw 
group of people standing outside um, waiting to talk to me when I was coming out, I might think that's a little weird, right? So what has what has the reaction been? And I, I'm imagining, well, I'm not, I'm saying I'm imagining, but I've been, I've been on Moscow outreaches with you, but, uh, uh, but you've been on way, way, way more. I've only been on a, been on a few, but, um, at the mosque outreaches, I'm imagining you run into different kinds of Muslims from different sects and that the level of aggressiveness, um, can be quite different. I'm imagining, you know, you have peaceful Muslims who are, are happy to have a conversation with you and, uh, less peaceful Muslims. So what, what, what's kind of the reaction of Muslims when they see your group standing outside the mosque? So just, just to be clear, everyone, George takes a group to mosque, to the mosque on Fridays. What he'll do is ahead of time, he'll, um, he'll train people. So pe people come to the conferences that he hosts and so on, and people get trained in evangelism to Muslims, how to respond to Muslim arguments, how to respond to uh, Muslim objections. And years ago, uh, this is how Nabil and I, for, for those of you who remember when Nabil and I got uh, arrested in Dearborn, we would go out to Dearborn because we were going out because Pastor George was having us come out to train Christians. There were Christians who were, um, you know, experienced that evangelism. Um, there were street preachers, but sometimes they didn't know a lot about Islam and didn't know what to expect. So George would bring us out there uh, to explain to people what sort of objections and arguments Muslims are going to raise. Then they get trained for a couple of days and then they they head out to the mosque and they can distribute materials. They can get in discussions with Muslims. Uh, some people will go to the mosque and, uh, you know, as people are, are, are walking home, you know, there, there are Christians on the sidewalks in the area to talk to them as they're leaving. Um, if if uh, if we know that it's a a Muslim area of a town, in other words, almost every ha every house uh, has Muslims living in it. Uh, there are some people who go knock on the doors and uh, and, you know, uh, to hand them some materials. Muslims very often are very hospitable in their homes and will invite people in for tea or coffee and have a discussion. So uh, very interesting, very interesting approach. But George, what, what's what's the, the response when, you know, when you are standing outside a, a mosque? Uh, you said something very important, uh, how we feel if we saw uh, Muslims in front of the church, for example, uh, Muslims, leaders, Muslim leaders, they always ask me this question, have you ever seen us in front of your church? Have we ever, have we ever come to your church? Why are you doing that to us? Mm -hmm. uh, and That's why I brought it up. I, yeah. yeah, majority of the team members, they will say, no, we did not see you, but I saw them in front of our churches. Oh, yeah? In Sudan, mm -hmm. in Egypt, in the Middle East. I told uh. them, yes, I've seen you. i seen the Muslims with the guns, and Allahu Akbar killed the infidels. I'm not coming the same way, sir. I'm coming with the love of Christ. If mm -hmm. you would like to have a gospel message, if you would like to talk about God, or if you want a Bible, I will be more than happy to hand you one. But I'm not coming here because I hate you or because I want to kill you, but because I love you and I want to see you in heaven one day. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's an objection. They always, they always bring up that objection uh, to us. Have you ever seen us? Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, when we go to a mosque for the first time, they think we have no right to be in the public sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And um, usually when we go to the mosque for the first time, usually we inform the city attorney, the chief of police and the mayor and also CC our attorneys for them to know we are doing things under constitution. Uh, we have the right to do so, uh, and uh, but, uh, a lot of time they have, they, they really think that we have no right to be in the public sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And sadly, sometimes officers comes that they have no clue what the constitution says. And uh, some one in one city, the officers say there's no sidewalk, but I know there's a public right of way. If there's no sidewalk, still there's a public right of way. Um, and but praise God, we have great Christian attorneys that they fight for our freedom. Um, but um, a majority of the gospel material and I uh, believe that some they, they have interest to talk to us. Muslim leaders are absolutely not happy. They, they don't want their people to talk mm -hmm. to us. And that's just show me that uh, they are concerned about them converting or leaving Islam. Mm -hmm. They uh, I feel like they, they don't feel like uh, they have uh, good grasp in Islam. Oh, you're broken up. You froze a little bit there, Pastor George. <laughs> One second. Um, Hang on, uh, sometimes 80, 90 percent. Go, yeah. go, go back about 30 seconds. You froze for a little bit there. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, the screen says uh, poor network now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is it better now? Well, it, it'll flow in and out. It, it's gonna. It looks like it'll it'll depend on what people are doing in your area. If a bunch of people log on to Netflix at a certain time, sometimes you can. Uh, uh, okay. It'll it'll affect it'll affect your internet too. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure yeah. my cell phone uh, is not in online. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, yeah, a majority of them, eighty to ninety percent, uh, they take the gospel material when we offer it to them, mm -hmm. and those sincere that they will take it and call us back later because there's a lot of fear involved. Mm -hmm. But sometimes um, the Muslim leader talking to us and argue with us and uh, other Muslims are watching. Mm -hmm. and Maybe the leader that I'm talking to, uh, it's not really the person I'm talking to. I can just see that mm -hmm. individual at the other side, just very attention to the conversation. Uh, but it's, it's really challenging mm -hmm. for them to see because this can never happen in the Middle East. I would mm -hmm. be killed immediately if I'm standing in front of a mosque mm -hmm. giving Bibles to Muslims. Uh, praise God for the freedom we have here. Yeah, and uh, you can see a kind of clash of civilizations. One of the most disturbing things uh, that, that ever happened um, as, a, as a Christian um, that I saw was in Dearborn. And this was at one of the mosque outreaches. Um, several of us went to, you, you would have people break up into teams and go to the area, uh, around the mosque. And then as people are leaving and walking home, then you hand them DVDs or copies of the, the, the gospel of John in Arabic and so on. And we went to a mosque in Dearborn and we're just, we're, we're standing in the area, right? We're standing on the public sidewalks near the mosque. So that kind of, you know, whatever direction people walk home in, we're, we've got someone there who can hand the materials and so on. And, um, and we're standing outside of there and uh, all of a sudden the police show up, the police show up and the, I see the, the mosque leaders come out and they're standing on the, the, the porch area right there. And the, uh, the police officer, he starts, uh, he starts talking to us, asking us what we're doing there, what we're doing. Meanwhile, people are walking home, right? And he's got us all sort of detained there at, at his car. He's asking what we're doing, why we're doing it, and so on. Um, telling us it's not respectful to uh, hand people things on their way home. I don't know why that would, would not be respectful. But um, then he walks over to the mosque leaders, starts speaking to them in Arabic. And <laughs> then he comes back to us and he says, everyone give me your IDs. And so we all, he's a police officer, so we all had to hand him our IDs. Now, if we'd known better, we could say, wait, what, what are we being charged with or something like that? Uh, but he, he told us to hand over all our IDs. And he sat there with a piece of paper and he wrote down all of our names and home addresses on it. Wow. And I wish if I was there. <laughs> yeah. Then he, 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 he gives us all our IDs back and says, okay, you're free to go. And by that time, everyone is gone, right? They, he kept us there. He kept us there writing down information until everyone had left. So notice, entire mosque outreach um, destroyed. And But notice, I mean, gosh, notice the intimidation, right? Guys, I'm writing down your home address. Now you're free to go. Um, pretty intimidating. So, yeah, uh, interesting situation. Now, oh, go ahead. I, I remember the Islamic Center of America does... Uh, in every mosque that we wanted to do outreach, we were able to do an outreach. Uh, the mm -hmm. Islamic Center of America, we were forbidden uh, to do that. I remember uh, Terry Jones. Uh, is it Terry Jones? Uh, mm -hmm. The one he burned the Quran? He was arrested yeah. just once he came out of his car to that mosque. He mm -hmm. was arrested uh, from being and prevented from being outside that mosque. Once we won our case in Dearborn, I, I told them that I will be going to that mosque and mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to introduce myself. I'm ready for another fight. Mm -hmm. And actually, when we arrived at the mosque, there was a sheriff police, a sheriff, sheriff cars, uh, four or five of them. And I tried to talk to them. They say, we're not allowed to talk to you. We are here just to to see everything. And right before the mosque outreach, uh, uh, five, six, seven <laughs> SUVs came and Sheikh Haddad himself, he came and you were there, you were videotaping. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I thought they were coming to take our freedom, but he said, no, we are here to protect your freedom. Uh -huh. uh, praise God, that was awesome. Yeah. That, was, uh, that, that was the day your, uh, uh, your car window got smashed, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah uh, I remember. Couple, couple, yeah, a couple of windows and uh, it, was in, uh, it was amazing uh, mm -hmm. why they did that. But, uh, but that, the first day, Muslims at that mosque were be, were a, uh, people, non-Muslims are able to approach them in front of the mosque. And mm -hmm. 
praise God. And that day they asked us for our IDs and I told them, no, we are not going to give you our IDs. You don't mm-hmm. need our IDs. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> I wish if I was with you guys. That mm. uh, de- definitely the police are trying to make peace, but uh, making peace b- with the price of giving our freedom away uh, to mm-hmm. them. And mm-hmm. that's very, very sad. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's cool that uh, that you're able to get so many uh, so many materials to so many people. Now, it's true you have been you have had people just punch you in your face. I know that because uh, I've seen video footage. <laughs> 2004, the last time. Yeah, 2004. <laughs> so that's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. I hope not anymore. <laughs> now, 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 if if I if I if I recall correctly, if I recall this the situation correctly, because uh, I've seen several I've seen several videos here. George has, George doesn't post his videos out there. I just people have them and so on. Um, if I recall correctly, uh, you were you were witnessing to some people outside the mosque, and a Muslim came out and started yelling that priests are pedophiles. And you said, hey, let me go get you something. And you went and got a copy of Sahih al-Bukhari. And then you brought it to him and showed him <laughs> that. Not, not right away. Now, oh, yeah. First, he was telling them that because he, he said uh, white men are uh, child molesters mm. and this and that. And I told him this is around that time there was a issue with the Catholic Church and stuff like that. It was happening. Mm-hmm. And he trying to label all white men as child molesters. And I mm-hmm. told him, sir, wherever you go, you're going to find bad people and good people. You cannot just label all of us. And they kept shouting, white men are child molesters. Mm-hmm. And I opened Hadith Bukhari Volume 4 and I started reading uh, some passages. And uh, this guy, I was not even talking to him, but he heard me reading the phrase that uh, I was playing with dolls where the prophet took me. Uh-huh. That's Aisha. Yeah, just so everyone knows, George George, uh, George froze here for one second. George, you froze again. One second, you froze. Uh, let me give the uh, little background real quick. Uh, so, hang on, George. George, 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 you froze. You froze there. So let, let, let me give the. I'll just give the back da- background of the hadith real quick. So, uh, as pretty much everyone who's watching right now knows already, Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl. Your average Muslim, especially back then. Uh, wasn't aware of this at all because all of their information is filtered by their leaders. And yes, Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl. And so you read the hadith and then what happened? Uh, this guy, he was walking by, he's an African-American Muslim. He was wearing a shirt to say jihad and under it to say holy war. And he pushed everybody and he started just punching me in the face. <laughs> and uh, and one of my friends was videotaping this and uh, um, it, it was bad. Uh, my, my face was, uh, my lip was cut and my teeth came out of it. Uh, but he kept hitting me in the face and I kept asking him, what if it is true? What if it is true? Would you read it, please? What if it is true? And he kept just hitting me. And uh, uh, when he saw my friend videotaping, they start chasing him. Uh, I mean, you, was, and you, I, I've, seen fo- I've seen footage of... <laughs> your friend running with the camera right yeah it was so fast (laughs) and he throw it in someone's house just in case if they catch him they will not find the camera and uh, it landed on a backyard with a carpet which is amazing yeah it was awesome but but the city they did not want i I called 911 they responded five hours later Mm -hmm. and they want to do nothing with it and uh a lot of homework ourselves we have to do their work i went back again one more time and we saw him we waited until he walked in his car we took his license plate mm-hmm. and he saw me again and he was going to attack me again but uh, praise god uh, some guys they hold him back from me mm-hmm. but even even with giving them who he is exactly the city did absolutely nothing to mm-hmm. him yeah and gosh can, can, can you imagine this guys because uh pastor george you're you're from sudan correct Absolutely. And, and tell everyone what the situation uh, between Muslims and Christians has been in the Sudan during the 20th century. Uh, it, is, it is sad that uh, we have, but, but just to tell you this, in the parliament of Sudan, uh, n- just right now, right now as we speak, there's four million people in the streets of Sudan. They want no Islamic government anymore. The president of Sudan is in jail right now, mm-hmm. but still people are not going to home until anyone, everyone that has anything to do with the previous government, they want it out. Mm-hmm. But this previous government in their parliament, they have three empty seats for jinn, 
jinn is, is a demons that hear the Quran and convert it to Islam. They put these three empty seats to guide them, to get guidance from these demons. As a result, we have over 2.5 million Christians, black people, the real black. So yeah. far, I did not find any black people in America. Mm -hmm. I, I found brown people, but the real black people in South Sudan uh, being killed by the name of Allah. And uh, over two million and a half of them. But also, not just Christians black being killed, even Sudanese black from Darfur being killed. Around seven, eight years ago, they did something called cleansing. That's what the president of Sudan called it at that time, cleansing. He sent a military called Jinjuit, Jin, demons, Weed, uh, Jinjuit, it means demons on horses. Mm -hmm. This, uh, this uh, military claimed to be demons and horses or de Muslim demons and horses. They went to that city, uh, burning to death. 3,000 babies and more, mm. and killing, the, uh, ra raping the women in front of their husbands and killing the husbands. Actions being done by the first early Muslims during the time of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. They did that in Darfur and they call it cleansing. Uh, I met Darfur people in Sudan, in America here, mm. and when I told them you were being persecuted by the Muslims, they would, sorry, they will absolutely agree with me. Uh, mm. and, uh, they, they, they are so open now to the gospel because they saw what is being done against them just because of their color, they're black. Mm -hmm. And that's why it really hurt me when I see my African-American Americans in America converting to Islam because they are betraying mm -hmm. their people. They're standing for the enemy that persecution, the, persecuting their people in Sudan and other places, part of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Islam is not the black man religion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's not the black man mm -hmm. religion. And uh, I went and spoke a few years ago in uh, in Ethiopia at a conference in Ethiopia, but it was a it was an African con uh, conference in the sense that there were people from uh, a a bunch of African countries, Kenya, Sudan. Uh, there, there, there was even a Christian there from Somalia, which is which is very which is very rare. But they had come from a variety of countries, talking about their experience uh, with Muslims in in their areas. And I heard some of the sickest, most disgusting stories I've ever heard about some of the things that are going on. And I would I would tell them I would say that you need to let people know about this. This needs to this needs to. Uh, look, look, I'll, I'll, I'll film your story. I'll put it on YouTube and, and every last one of them, you can't, you can't, they will, they will, they will come and kill my family. They'll come and they'll come and slaughter all the people in my village. Um, and so it's really, really sad situation. So the, anyway, I, I wanted to bring that up because that's a situation in Sudan. Um, millions of Christians killed in the 20th century. And then you leave the Sudan. You come to the United States, supposed to be supposed to be a, a country that protects our religious liberties, protects our freedom of speech. And you, a, a guy who's who's lived in Sudan, can get punched in the face by an American convert to Islam, and the guy will get a free pass. Yeah, and at the moment I remember, I recall when September 11 happened, the first airplane hitting the Twin Towers. I, I knew, I knew exactly from the first one, I knew that Islam behind it. And I felt so guilty at that time because I came here and, uh, in 1996 and I started just getting into a regular job and uh, neglecting the fact that I've been reaching out to Muslims and I've been speaking in Sudan about Islam and stuff like that. Uh, and I was very, very convicted. And because... Even though I was born in Sudan, my, my parents were born in Sudan, my grandfather came to Sudan in 1914. We, I was not able to get a Sudanese citizen, even though I, my grandparents came to Sudan in 1915, and my parents were born in Sudan, I was not qualified as a citizen because uh, we have to get it as second class. And to get it at second class, I have to be 21 years old. And I left when I was 19, then I was not able to get it. Uh, but uh, this is the country where I have my first citizenship. And I, I love this country so much. And I, uh, I was very, very troubled uh, seeing our freedom being taken away uh, uh, by September 11. But what more troubling to me are uh, going through the case in Dearborn, Michigan, and seeing how uh, Muslims can influence government officials and judges and everything. It, it's just very, very troubling. Mm -hmm. um, let me go ahead and respond to someone who is trolling the comment section real quick. Uh, so this is from Amy Harris. 
who's a Muslim, uh, says, can you explain all the scientific miracles in the Quran? Um, yeah, I can explain some of the scientific miracles in the Quran. Uh, for instance, Muhammad miraculously knew that the sun sets in a muddy pool way out west, and he knew that uh, Dhul Karnain, usually identified as Alexander the Great, traveled so far west, he actually found the place where the sun sets. Notice that if the sun is setting in a in a muddy pool way out west, well, the sun must be much smaller than the earth. And so we know that the sun is much smaller than the earth. We know that if you travel far enough west, you can find the place where it sets. We know that there are people living there because that's what the Quran says in Surah 18. And we know that Dhul Karnain actually traveled there and survived. He, he, he got close enough to the sun to actually uh, see where it's setting in a muddy pool. And uh, he, he, he was totally fine. So that's a scientific miracle. Muhammad had miraculous uh, scientific insight that uh, semen is formed between the backbone and the ribs. It's in this area. And so uh, that's amazing because, I mean, there, there's no uh, there's no medical doctor in the world who knows that. Muhammad's the only one who's ever known that. So that's amazing. Uh, Muhammad is the only uh, person who was aware that shooting stars, when you see a shooting star in the sky, it's because Allah took a star and hurled it at a demon. And so shooting stars are, scientists will tell you, that, you know, a shooting star is just a rock that hits the atmosphere and then, you know, makes a streak across the sky. Um, but Muhammad knew that it's an actual star. So not only is the sun very small, uh, stars are very small. And so they can actually hit our atmosphere and then they only last a couple of seconds there. And so uh, Muhammad knew that, that, star, that shooting stars are actual stars that Allah has hurled at demons. And so, yes, we have all sorts of... Uh, amazing scientific miracles in the Quran. Uh, Muhammad is the only one who could possibly know these things because other people who actually go and study them come to the exact opposite conclusion. So the only way Muhammad could know these things, apart from being totally ignorant, is divine revelation because no one would ever come to these conclusions uh, apart from that. All right. So, Pastor George, um, you host a uh, conference and wanted to make sure we told people before the end uh, this before we close out. But um, why don't you tell little pe people about the conference you host in September so that I make sure we don't forget because we certainly wanted people to go to that. Uh, it's called Our Strong Tower and it's actually a memory of September 11. Uh, uh, the Muslims were able to take down our twin towers, but our strong tower, Jesus himself, they can never take down. Mm -hmm. No matter what they do, even when Islamic countries, they make it forbidden for the gospel to go to this country. Because Jesus revealing himself to them through dreams and visions, they can never stop the gospel. Uh, Christians, brothers and sisters in this country is willing to lay down their lives for the gospel. They're willing to share the gospel even if the price will be prisoned or killed. Um, the, the gospel will spread, not even the gates of hell will stand in front of the church. Uh, praise God for that. But we, in September 11, uh, uh, the second weekend of September, usually we celebrate our strong tower. Uh, we the first night usually we uh, we have a memory of september 11 we pray for the family of families of those lost their loved ones and uh, but we also have a, cha um, a panel discussion with former muslims sharing their stories how they came to know christ as a lord and savior uh, we will have jay smith uh, giving a small lecture on friday night then on Saturday entirely, we're going to be having workshops. I actually, this, this year, we're going to have uh, a small, I, don't, I did not hear comments yet from David or Jay yet, but most likely they're going to do a small mag debates uh, where David going to be a Muslim and Jay is the Christian. And after that, they switch. Uh, um. Hang on, you kind of, um, you, fro you froze there, George. We're going to be focusing yeah. in techniques okay. and tips mm -hmm. in evangelism. Mm -hmm. Oh, just saying, you froze, you froze for a second. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, we're going to be giving tips on evangelism, how to use, uh, to use certain message of um, evangelism, how to use uh, certain techniques with apologetics and polemics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really going to be a great, great conference. I really encourage you to come and join us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and guys, the uh, the link to George's website is there in the description box. So the Ministry to Muslims website, where you can uh, sign up for the conference. Uh, again, that's out in that's out in California. Now, you normally do it in Anaheim. Is it in Anaheim? You mentioned it's at a different this church. Time, 
this time it's going to be in Chino Hills. Okay. Chino Hills, California, Southern California. So, Southern uh, California. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but also, we have this coming June, from June um, uh, 6 to June 12th, we're going to be having, uh, the, the Muslims having the Islamic festival in Anaheim, and we're going to be doing an outreach outside the Islamic festival. We need a lot of people. If any of you are willing to come and help us out here, we would love to have you. If any of you born-again Christian, mm-hmm. uh, we would love to have you, absolutely. Uh, we're going to be going to Muslim refugee homes. Uh, we're going to be covering many different uh, areas of outreaches, like we're going to go to campuses where we're reaching out to international students. We're going to go to uh, different malls where there's a lot of uh, Muslim community that uh, people comes there from Islamic community in the area. Uh, we During the week, we're going to have training. We're going to have outreaches. We're going to have a time of prayer. Uh, it's just very, very busy week from morning to night. Uh, if you need more information, please uh, feel free uh, to contact me. Mm-hmm. So just to be clear, someone who is in that area and wants to do outreach to Muslims, but doesn't even know how to go about it, doesn't know how to get started, has never done anything like that before, is extremely nervous, you're saying that they could go to your website, uh, contact you, that you'll help put them through training, and that they can actually go out to a huge event with a ton of Muslims and be there with several other Christians who are going to be distributing gospel materials to Muslims, and then they'll get to use some of their new skills in conversation with actual Muslims out there. Look, uh, I know majority of you have been watching David Wood and uh, watching the YouTubes and uh, video clips and many different topics. I really believe you are, if you are a born-again Christian and if you know the essential of the Bible, the gospel message that you share with other people, non-Muslims, you are good enough to reach out to Muslims. I believe there's fear in the body of Christ, They're afraid of reaching out to Muslims a majority of the time because of uh, violence. But I, I promise you this, the majority of Muslims are very loving, kind people. The majority of Muslims in this nation, they're coming seeking freedom, but we know the only way for them to be free indeed is through the gospel message. Mm -hmm. And if you have a fear of uh, not feeling comfortable yet talking to them, I I promise you that the only way to overcome that fear when you start reaching out to them. If you are able to come in June, we would love to have you. If you are not able to come in June, and you want to do an outreach in your area, wherever you are, a mosque outreach, I will be more than ha- happy to provide you with the gospel material, to provide you with uh, copies of the letters that you can send to your city attorney, and mayor, and chief police, and let them know you have the right to be in front of that mosque. I will give you all the tools and all the need and the training to... to uh, the local mosque. Lost you again there at the end. So go ahead and repeat what you said at the end there. Okay, I I will provide Mm -hmm. whatever it needs, uh, like the gospel material, uh, the copy of the letters that we present to the city attorney and chief of police and stuff like that. Like when we're going to a mosque for the first time, I will set you with all the things you need to reach out to the Muslims in your area if you want to start your own ministry, your own outreach at the mosque. Mm -hmm. Uh, The gospel material we will ship it to you free of charge. uh, Mm -hmm. This wanted to see more people please use what you learn what you mm-hmm. every time you see a new video go and put it to practice watch the video the islamic dilemma it's a mm-hmm. very powerful video in 10 minutes you will be able to use that video in every objection muslims bring against mm-hmm. you and uh guys that's um it, it's very important to understand how easy it is to learn to respond to most Muslim objections. Now, there are things, you know, if you're talking about the doctrine of the Trinity and so on that are, that are, uh, you know, require a, a more, more thorough discussion and so on. But most of the objections are so simple, are so simple to respond to that y- you have nothing to worry about. And, and I tell, I tell Christians this because lots of Christians are, they think, oh, you know, gosh, I would need to, st- Muslims have so many sources and all these different books and, uh, you know, they'll have all the, all of these arguments and, you know, it, it will take, it will take me years to study all of this. I, I tell Christians, guys, you can, you can go through two days of training and you will be absolutely fine because Muslims don't come with 700 different objections. They come with about five or six objections, uh, sometimes worded differently, but that's what they come with. And when they, when they come up with arguments for Islam, they've got things that they've heard all of their lives but no one ever bothered to challenge them, and it's very easy to challenge them. So just just a few minutes ago, we saw 
a Muslim talking about scientific miracles in the Quran. How difficult was it for me to quote a couple of passages from the Quran and show that the Quran is actually a scientific disaster? Wasn't difficult at all. Let's look at another one. So here's Amy Harris again. Thank you for, for helping out this discussion, Amy. <clears throat> Says, your Bible has been changed a million times, but our Quran hasn't changed once. All right, now watch this. Two, two things here. Our Bible has been changed a million times. You could say, okay, what are the what are the million times, something like that, name them for me, because it's obviously not a person who studied the history of the Bible. Uh, but okay, let's let's go ahead and grant that. Wait a minute now. The Quran says that the Torah and the Gospel, the Torah and the Gospel, are the words of Allah. Are the words of Allah? That's Surah three, verses three to four. Surah eighteen, verse twenty-seven says, "No one can change the words of Allah." Surah six, verse one fifteen says, "No one can change the words of Allah." Um, Surah 7 verse 157 says that Christians and Jews still had the Torah and the gospel during the time of Muhammad. So this is the seventh century. This is long. This is 2,000 years after the Torah is revealed and hundreds of centuries after the gospel has been revealed. And so they had been reliably preserved during that time. Guess what? We have copies of the gospel before the time of Muhammad, during the time of Muhammad, and after the time of Muhammad. We know what the gospel during the time of Muhammad said. And the Quran calls that the gospel. Uh, not only that, Surah 5 verse 43 says that Jews don't need Muhammad because they have the Torah. That only makes sense if the Torah is still the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. Uh, Surah, uh, Surah 5, verse 47, said, orders Christians to judge by the gospel. That makes no sense if our gospel has been corrupted. Uh, Surah 5, verse 68, says that Jews and Christians have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the Torah and the gospel. So, if what you're saying is true and the Bible has been changed a million times, then Allah did not know that. Allah is not aware of this, and that means that Allah is not God. He's ignorant. So you've just told us that you know more than your own God, and you've refuted Islam. Muhammad's a false prophet because he's proclaiming uh, false revelations, confirming our scriptures, which you say have been corrupted. So you've just refuted Islam. As for your other part of your claim here, that the Quran hasn't changed once. If the Quran hasn't changed once, then why do your own Muslim sources, such as uh, Sahih Muslim, say that entire chapters of the Quran were lost because Muslims hardened their hearts and didn't recite them enough? Why did Aisha say that more than a hundred verses came up missing from Surah 33? Why did Aisha say in Sunan Ibn Majah, number 1944, that uh, she had the only copy of the verse of, of stoning adulteresses and of breastfeeding adults 10 times. She had the only copy and a, 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 a sheep or a goat. Yeah, some of the sources say sheep, some say goat came in and ate the only copy. And that's why these verses are not in the Quran today. We know they were in the Quran back then. We know that they were revealed as part of the Quran. And... They're not in the Quran today. What happened? Well, the answer we have is from Aisha. She says she's the only one who had a copy and her sheep came and ate it. And yet you say the Quran hasn't been changed once. It's at this point that if I were you, I wouldn't be flipping out. I wouldn't be getting angry. I wouldn't be posting comments, displaying my ignorance. I would stop and say, wow, I'm all I'm doing here is repeating the things that my leaders tell me, that my imams tell me, that my apologists tell me. And I clearly haven't studied any of this. Maybe before posting all these comments, I should actually spend a few minutes studying. And once you do that, if you start examining these claims critically, you will find that you've been misled. And if your leaders have misled you about these things, so simple to refute, what else have they been misleading you over? So, ladies and gentlemen, all of that was one example on how easy it is, how easy it is to respond to like 97% of the objections that Muslims give you, that most of them you can just bam, here's it, here's how I can show you that it's false. It's obviously false. Uh, why are you saying these things? Um, why haven't you investigated this yourself? So anyway, th those are, these are the sorts of things we, we train you to answer uh, in the training. And then you actually go out with someone like George or you go out with, uh, in your area and put these things to use. And I'm, I'm telling you, look, look, I, I, I did an interview recently with, with Imam Tawhidi. Um, he, is, he is really fed up with uh, terrorism around the world. I know there are people who are suspicious of him, who don't like him and so on. Uh, but like it or not, he really does blast uh, terrorists and jihadis and so on. Um, I asked him what, you know, well, how do you, how do you, how do you propose to change that? His response was pretty shocking. He said, I think the Christian church needs to rise up and stand against this. Wow. <laughs> right? Wow.
<laughs> that, that's an imam, right? He says, he says you, you guys are being wiped out in the Middle East. Christians are being wiped out in the Middle East. Why is the church not doing anything, right? Wow. And so uh, very interesting advice. And, and notice, ladies and gentlemen, that it's the, if you really, really are, are concerned about, this, about jihad and the spread of Islam and so on, it's very simple. Get some training, get some materials, and put them, put them to use. And if you can't, we understand that there are people who, you know, you got families and you're in the wrong area and you, you, you don't even have a, a mosque that you could go to and you can't travel to where George is because you have other obligations and so on. Um, for, for, for those of you who, who uh, can't uh, actually go out or, or you just don't really want to do that, um, you can support people who do, right? Because there are people who, uh, who would love to be doing that full time. You find those people, support them and let them go do it right and uh so there's some uh Look, there's, some if, there. there's, uh, there's other ways that you can uh, help us not mm -hmm. just financially but if uh let's say uh, you take uh articles by david wood and summarize this article or make a tr one page track one ah, you froze again george page. one second one articles this is great article we we want to put it into uh, one page that we can hand out to Muslims. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, you can help that way as well, it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, guys, there are, there are tons of ways to be involved, but um, I think I think everyone needs to be involved, right? And uh, I think we can all agree that the church needs to stand up. This is not a time for um, ignoring the problem, pretending the problem doesn't exist, and so on. Now, George, um, you're someone who you, you've already pointed out uh, goes and travels to mosques and so on. We wanted to uh, get to the the update on your truck here uh, because a lot of the people here uh, contributed to that. Um, but George, why have I never seen you in a reliable vehicle in my entire life? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, kind of broke. <laughs> yeah. uh, but praise God, this is was really amazing gift, guys. I thank you each one of you for your uh, generosity and giving. Uh, it is being really a great blessing. Uh, we bought uh, a 2019 uh, Tundra, Toyota uh, Tundra. Uh, hang on, I can, uh, put th I can put that on the screen because you sent me a picture. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, there we go. Ah, so that is a nice looking truck. Why'd you go with, why'd you go with that truck? Does that say V8 on the side? Yes, it have to be because it pulls 11,000 pounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, hey, and, so, and, so, I, and so, hang on. The, so the situation here was, um, you haul, you haul, you, you, ideally you want to haul lots of materials around. And in the video, I showed people just pallet after pallet after pallet of, uh, Bibles and gospel tracks and DVDs and so on. And you really needed a way to haul those around. You, there was a ministry that agreed to donate a trailer for you to haul these around, yeah. but you didn't have a truck that could haul the trailer. And so you're sort of stuck. And the reason I thought of that is because I know the exact same, I know the exact same feeling um, with, uh, with our two, we, we have five sons, two of them are disabled. Um, and we were, we were living in the Bronx and we're on the, the third story of someone's house. So we're on a third story apartment. They, they turned the, the, the top floor into a, a separate apartment. So we're on the third floor and you know, our kids are getting older and bigger and we wanted to, them to have automatic wheelchairs. Well, there's no way they can go up and down those stairs in automatic wheelchairs. And so my wife, Maria, actually uh, took our sons over to a place that, um, you know, deal, that, that, that uh, sells uh, the, the, the wheelchairs and so on. And they're like, look, you need one, you need a van that, that can move these things around, that transports these things. And you need to be able to um, get, them, get them in and out of an apartment because they're several, they're several hundred pounds. And so here's a situation where we can get wheelchairs and we have no way of moving them around and no place to move them, move them around to. I mean, no place to move them to. And uh, one, one day our church, just out of nowhere, we didn't, we didn't ask them. We didn't, we didn't mention the problems and so on. They said, hey, we noticed you, you guys basically have a little car and you have all these sons. Uh, we know you're going to need some help moving some stuff around. So... Uh, we want to um, uh, do a fundraiser to get you guys a van so that you have a, a place here you can move the, the wheelchairs around. So they, they did that. We, we got an awesome uh, Ford uh, E350, uh, well, Ford Transit, um, but we got the van. But then still, we, we, there's no place to bring them to. So we actually had to move. So anyway, the idea of, hey, I got this awesome thing. I got an awesome van, but 
couldn't use it because we didn't have the wheelchairs, couldn't use the wheelchairs until we got uh, moved to a different place where the kids can be like on a first floor and actually have, I built a wheelchair ramp. So anyway, we moved, I built a wheelchair ramp. We've got the van. We just got the first uh, uh, motorized wheelchair um, for Reed. Um, Paley's is going to be here in a, in a, in a couple weeks, but it's that idea of, Hey, I've got this awesome thing and can't use it because I need this other thing to make that thing work. And so, um, now anyway, that was a situation of when, when you told me you had a, you had a, uh, you had a trailer and I'm thinking, what, you don't have anything to pull a trailer. And so, uh, so yeah. Yeah. It is awesome. Uh, we, we're getting um actually at that time we someone committed to buy the trailer but we did not even pick, try to look for one because we did not have the truck to pull it but uh, yeah. now we have the truck we are locating one and we're working on it this time uh we're gonna get it very soon we have uh, we're gonna have an rv trailer with uh, also space to pa to pack bibles and books but my family my kids are homeschooled we can travel together uh, for example, last year I traveled more than five times, and each time uh, this is just for one location. We went, I went five times each time at around a week. We training missionaries going overseas to the Islamic world. Uh, I just came back from there, also the same location. I was there for two weeks, uh, and instead of going alone, I can take my family with me. But also, we can be able along the way as we're going. Instead of just flying there, I can stop in different churches, different uh, areas. We can preach the gospel. We can uh, at the mosque on Fridays at the churches. Sorry, guys. Uh, the churches on. Um, uh, Sundays and Wednesdays to speak and equip the body of Christ is just an amazing opportunity. Now we can do that finally. And uh, the truck we got, it has six passenger truck and that, that's, which is really awesome for my family. Uh, we'll be able all of us to fit together and have the resources, but also we getting, um, uh, an uh, enclosed trailer where we can just pack it. Uh, half of it is going to be like a small office for me, mm -hmm. and half of it in the back is set up as a Christian bookstore. But it's mostly tracks and stuff. When I speak in churches, we want the people to get Nabil's book. We need them to get tracks to give out to their Muslim neighbors. Uh, we, we will have it like if it's locally, I will use this one just for myself. But if it's uh, far away, we go with my family. I use the other one. Uh, but this is really awesome. You are an answer prayer, each one of you. Thank you, David. Thank you. One second, John. Uh, David, One... do you remember any of the mission trips we went? Oh yeah, I remember. I remember some mission trip. We kind of we kind of lost you for about uh for about twenty seconds there. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about a mission trip real quick. But um, uh, before you mentioned you mentioned the Beals books. Um, yeah. Someone uh, sent me a five hundred dollar check for you. Uh, in other words, it's um, it's someone who didn't want to. They don't like they don't like uh, contributing electronically, so they don't want to give to the GoFundMe. So they sent me a five hundred dollar check. To go towards that truck, um, you don't actually need that for the truck because you already have the truck. Um, yeah. You mentioned the Beals books. Um, I happen to know his wife Michelle. If 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 I could get you some, if I could spend that on discounted books, you want me to go ahead and try to do that? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. That would be awesome. Last year, last year, uh, uh, we have. 70, 65, 70 young people from Phoenix. Uh, David, you talked to them there mm -hmm. too. You went with me there. No, that, uh, no, and just so you know, that, that that was uh, that that was that was awesome because I, I spoke to them. They had already read Nabil's books. Yeah. They went and, through the book. They yeah. went through the book. Uh, no God but Allah uh, or Jesus. That book and uh, this young people. They're all under seventeen years old, and they came here with me to California. They spent the entire week. They camp at our church here. Um, they went with me to the mosque, inside the mosque. Uh, they couldn't respond to their arguments. Mm -hmm. It was so powerful, that book, that to train these young people using that book, mm -hmm. it was really awesome. Uh, I, I really, really encourage people to use that book. It's really great. And if mm -hmm. I can get copies of it, that yeah. would be a big blessing. And, and so th those are awesome scenarios, right? You have, you have because there's not a lot of um, Christian schools and so on that want to get involved. And so when we see them, right, because sometimes I'll go somewhere, I'm speaking somewhere, and then there will be, you know, a Christian school that says, hey, can you come speak to the middle schoolers and stuff like that, which I'm always shocked by, right? I'm like, well, why? And they would say, they would say, well, because 
kids nowadays, they a lot of what they learn, they learn from the internet. And so when they're searching for something, they find you. And so they, they love to have you. But notice the situation, right? Once you have a, a school that's actually interested in, in apologetics, then they do something like they read Nabil's book, and then they have me come and speak, and then they go out and do outreach with George and actually get to use it. And they're doing all of that in their teenage years. You are, you are raising up a generation of warriors, right. warriors for Christ there. I was, I was amazed with these young people. At the Islamic festival, they have a booth. It says, we are Muslims. We love Jesus because we are Muslims. And these young people went to ask the right questions. All of a sudden, the same situation like what happened in Dearborn, they have the security around us, surrounding us, and they were going to kick us out. I went and brought the police right away, and I told the police, uh, I want to ask you, officer, uh, what was the regulation? Say, don't hand this stuff out. Uh, as long as you don't hand that stuff out, they are fine. I don't, we did not hand any stuff out. Uh, I, I pointed to the booth. I say, officer, when... Hey, George, you need to, hey, we need to get you some better internet next time. Who are they? Buddhist? Hindus? Are they, are they targeting Hindus? Are they targeting atheists? When the Buddhists say, we love Jesus because we are Muslims, they are absolutely, the officer himself, he say, absolutely, they are targeting Christians. They're asking Christians for, to, to go to them. Okay, mm -hmm. they're inviting us to go and speak. When we speak, they kick mm -hmm. us out because mm -hmm. they, they wanted people that are ignorant about their religion. They wanted people that they can refute and they convert to Islam out of mm. <laughs> just just like that easy thing. But uh, these young people were so equipped, they they challenged them so much in that mosque. In the mosque, when we went inside the mosque, after the mosque outreach, uh, all these Muslims coming out of uh, following us, they want to help up uh, to help out uh, the the leader that was speaking to us because they recognized that the leader could not answer the questions. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them, uh, one young lady and this Muslim man for 20 minutes, he telling us her how perfect and how miraculous the Quran is. And she, after he spoke for 20 minutes, she told him, can you please open this verse? She referred to the verse that talked about where the baby come from. <laughs> uh, <and laughs> no, no, he, no, that's exactly what I, I, I spoke at, at the school on. It was, it was five, I, my presentation was five reasons the Quran cannot be the word of God. And, uh. Yeah, and, and, and she, he read the verse. He told him, sir, I'm so sorry. If one verse is wrong in the Quran, then the Quran is not perfect. <laughs> and the guy, he was just like quiet. He couldn't say anything. She insisted. She gave him a Nabil's book, and he, he, he was going to reject it. But she insisted. She told him, you're going to take it, and you're going to read it. And he took it. And then my prayer, he will come to know Christ as the Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Uh, all right, so we're, we're going to tell a little uh, a mosque outreach story real quick. And uh, But first, I wanted to... Uh, quick comment right here because it's important uh radical love said are we allowed to mail flyers to homes to reach muslims and to inform others without getting into trouble i mean is there any laws against it anyone know as far as i know you can mail anything you want i mean obviously not a bomb or something you can't mail anything you want but you can you can mail i i have something really good here uh i'm so glad you said that because we have a ministry partner that paid for 60 million jesus all right, this is why people are donating to George's internet here. Every single house in America desires to reach out to the Muslims, but when I I'm leading here in California the work to reach out to every home in California because by reaching every home, we are reaching every Muslim in, in California. But mm -hmm. wherever you are, I will be more than happy to ship all the material to and even the maps for your city. Uh, that you can cover every single home in your city free of charge. Mm -hmm. And we can give you also the maps for your city. We can give you the bags. We can give you everything. The only thing we need that you ask your local church to include a flyer to invite them to church service. Mm -hmm. That's not targeting Muslims. That's targeting every single mm -hmm. individual in your city. If you want to do that, please mm -hmm. just text message me at my cell phone number, 714-391-0463. 714-391-0463. I need a name, a you, phone number, email, and a zip code that you want to adapt. And we are not asking for any money. We're giving into the material, not us, the ministry partner, and you can take it free of charge. You, you know we're live on the internet right now. <laughs> and yeah. You just gave out your cell phone, right? <laughs> That's absolutely fine. <laughs> right. I, I have, Sadiq Abdul Malik was calling me. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So, uh, so guys, so, so George, George has materials. Uh, it's also easy to find materials that you can, you can print out yourself. Like I've been, I have several tracks that I've made over the years. Um, but I've been sort of slowly, uh, uploading them, uh, to act17.org. And so there are some on there now I'll be uploading, uh, more and these you can just download, uh, you can you can if you only want a few copies you can download them print them print them up uh fold them up and then you've got you've got trifold uh tracks so it's like here's an example um this is uh we, we've got them on on islamic issues we've got them on on uh, christian issues all of the main um all of the main very very powerful tracks i mm -hmm. i use david tracks many many times in mm -hmm. different outreaches we printed mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of them yeah, and uh, lots of them are on very important issues. So I have a track on the preservation of the Quran, just given what the Muslim sources say about changes to the Quran. So notice most of that is shocking new information to Muslims. So uh, anyway, I'll have a bunch of tracks on there uh, as I get around to it. And notice, very easy to, to download one, print one, print up a couple and give them to people. Or if you want more, you can go to places like Staples or Office Max, print up, they'll print up a box for them. They, they, are, they have machines that fold them. Uh, if you want lots of them, there are, uh, there are printing companies that will print up tens of thousands of them for you for, for the pretty cheap if you're, if you're getting them in bulk. So all kinds of ways. And you know, yes, you are totally allowed to send people stuff. That's why you get junk mail, right? That's why businesses send you stuff all the time that you didn't ask for. Uh, you're allowed, you're allowed to do that. Um, so yes, yes. And, and, and that's a good idea. Notice that's something, that's something cool because that's something that people can do from their home, right? If they, you know, if they've got kids and they can't, you know, can't be going or, you know, across the country or something like that, then again, that's something that people can do from their homes. Okay. So George, you want to tell a, a, a story? I don't remember. I want to tell the story when that jihadi called me up in a hotel. I don't remember where we were. Well, I feel like we were close Washington. to dc okay so we're around dc that was a and that was a mosque outreach there was a big mosque there we, we were there for the festival we were uh -huh. there for a whole week mm -hmm. training and outreach and mm -hmm. uh you receive a call a uh, few times in your room on oh your... yeah so yeah 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 so yeah so yeah i, I had uh, david layman a guy named david layman was uh sharing a hotel room with me david and, layman yeah david layman he started uh he the phone in our room would start ringing and he would answer it and he would say, uh, hello, hello, hello. And then, uh, hang up. And so he told me that after this happened a couple of times, he says he answers the phone and, and no one answers. Um, no one's there. And so finally he goes to the bathroom and the phone rings and I don't say hello. I just pick up the phone and I just hold it up to myself. So I'm just sitting there with a the phone and it's totally quiet, totally quiet, totally quiet. And then all of a sudden, there's a whisper, and it says, "Yes, you're there. I know where you are." Right? And so we've been doing outreach all week at the mosques and stuff, and we're at the hotel. So I was like, "Oh, well, that's uh, that's peculiar." So I either went to the front desk then to ask if they could trace a call. So at that point, I, okay, I went to the I went up to the front desk and I said, "Hey, can you guys trace a call? I want to find out where a call is coming from so I can call them back." And it was a new guy at the desk, and he goes, "What? I don't know how to do that. You'll have to wait for the for the manager to get back. Uh, the manager's out right now." So then I talked to you, and you said that you'd gotten a, a a call, a similar call, but it's on your cell phone, not uh, not called to the to the your hotel room. So you started telling me to to change rooms or to change hotels. And, and you uh, said no. Nope. Yeah, yeah. They, you, you, I, I, uh, they know I am big. If they're gonna come, it's gonna be two, three guys. And they can, if there's a war, it's gonna be right here in this room. Oh yeah, I was saying all kinds of stuff like that, guys. That, look, there are my positions kind of change depending on a variety of factors. But there are times when I'm bordering on pacifism with respect to myself. Like times where you could beat me to death, and I, I wouldn't even fight back. If, if people tried to kill me, if I were on stage in a debate and people came to kill me, I would just put my hands up in the air and, and let it happen. There are other times, and it's usually if other people are around, right? Like if I'm in a hotel room with another guy, and I think, well, if they kill me, they might kill him too. Well, no, well, I have to, I have to, you know, protect someone. Anyway, the point is, there are other times. There are other times when I'm not a pacifist at all, and if you're going to kill me, you better bring an army in there. So, so I go, I go to the hotel room. The hotel room had a little, it had a little kitchen set there and it had a, it had a knife set in there. So I grabbed a, I grabbed a knife. I'm sitting there in the hotel. George is calling me, telling me, Hey, we, we need to get you out of the room. We need to get you out of the room. I'm saying, no, no, no. And so I go ahead and grab a knife. All of a sudden 
there's a knock at the door. There's a knock at the door and there there's one of the little viewers, one of the little peepholes there. I didn't even look through it. <laughs> I didn't even look through the hole, right? When I could have looked out there and seen who it was. I didn't even look, right? I just got a knife. I just got a knife there and the knock is at the door and I go and I, I swing the door open and, uh, and you're there. <laughs> so, so what do you, what do you I, think there, George? <laughs> I, I was trying to convince you to change your room, but actually... Wait, 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 wait. What, what, you remember what David Lehman was doing? Yeah, you, you, you switched beds. You had a full plan that they will come toward David Lehman and you will jump on them if they come to the room. Uh, you were holding the knife behind you and David Lehman with his shorts and his eyes not able to open yet. He's trying to see who's there. I told him, David... He's holding a knife. What about you? He said, I'm ready to take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, everyone. So I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there walking back and forth in the room going, the final battle between good and evil will be fought in room 102. And David Le <laughs> David Lehman's sitting there with a camera. He wants to, he understands he's got some YouTube gold here if he gets this, uh, if he gets these jihadis uh, coming to kill me. So anyway, you told me. You told me, hey, you, you need to change room. I said, no, I'm not changing rooms. I'm staying right here. I'll wait for them. And then you said, uh, let's, at least pray. let's pray. Yeah, at least let's pray. So we, we bowed our heads. And, and what was your prayer? Lord Jesus, forgive me for tricking my brother. <laughs> uh, actually, after, after I did that trick on you on the phone, my wife told me David is very bad. If he's going to get back on you, it's going to be really bad because he's so smart. <laughs> he's just like, you better go and tell him and confess. But when I came down there and you are with the knife, I just <laughs> wanted to continue it again. <laughs> So guys, you understand how messed up this is. This is a guy who, uh, hey, let's go, let's go do outreach to Muslims. But then when we're back in the hotel, it's, uh, it's let me convince, <laughs> let me convince David that a terrorist is coming for him. But ho hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, look, I was in the parking a few days later. You were planning with Nabil's former friends. They were still Muslims. You were planning them to kidnap me as revenge. You know that? No, was I? You remember? No. Yeah, you were, you were right there <laughs> talking to them inside the restaurant. Oh, I, re I remember those. That was those those guys were both named Farhan. There were two Farhans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were trying to make a deal with them to come and kidnap me as revenge. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So those are <laughs> those are fun times. Um, hey, George, a bunch of people have been contributing on Super Chat, which goes into my account, but some of them clearly intend it for you. Someone. Uh, um, put a hundred, uh, it's Canadian dollars. So it's worth like, you know, five cents and no, I'm just kidding. That's uh, but it's, uh, first and last said your first gas fill up on the new hauler. So he clearly means that for you, not for me. And so, but this goes into my account, but all right, just so everyone knows, um, I'll be seeing George this summer and all the super chats, all the super chats for today. I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be given to George here, or I'll use them to get uh, if if I can get copies of uh, extra copies in Nabil's books for him at a discount. That be blessing, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, all thank right. you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, everyone. Yeah. So, guys, um, we did uh, anyway. We, we we'll go ahead and uh, we should be going ahead and uh, and wrapping up now. But we did the fundraiser, and I said that I was going to give out some uh, some prizes and so on. And I was going to do that here. That was my intention. I was going to just name the people here, but I noticed some of the people didn't make their names public on the fundraiser. I have their names, but they didn't make their names public. And so I'm assuming they don't want to be named. Uh, so anyway, the situation is um, basically there were, uh, I, I just wanted to say, guys, j just so you know, it takes a lot to blow my mind. And, and that whole situation there kind of blew my mind. Um, and, and when I was, when I put up, uh, you know, $25,000 as the goal, um, I didn't know if we were going to get $25,000. I was hoping, I was thinking just based on past experience of uh, me needing things, because most of the, the fundraisers I've done in the past have been for, you know, I need a new camera or something like this, or my laptop died and I need a new laptop. Sometimes do things for other people, like, you know, took up a fundraiser for Sam Shimon to get a new laptop and so on. So we do things like that. But that's very different from like, a you know, a truck, 
or something like that. So didn't know quite what to expect, but I was thinking based, I, I know there are tons of generous people there. I know there are people who everything, I, basically everything I've ever needed since I've started on the internet, uh, every trip I've needed to take, every piece of equipment I've ever needed, anytime I've ever said I need this, it, people have covered it. So I knew that, that there are tons of generous people out there, but people don't know George. And so I'm kind of just vouching for this guy. And so didn't know quite what to expect. I put a goal of 25,000 on there because I was thinking that's what it takes to get a good size truck that will haul a big trailer full of supplies and so on. Um, but I was, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe uh, pretty sure we could get like 10,000. Even then, you know, he'd have to get a used truck, but it will be, you know, he'll get something that can, you know, it'll be several years old. Be, um, but he'll get, he'll be able to get something that, that hauls it. I was hoping we could get that whole 25,000 because then I can know he, and then I knew he'd get a really good truck. Uh, but I was hoping, you know, maybe a little more, maybe 30 or 35, just so, you know, get something with a nice V8 engine and then he's just good to go. And so I was, I was like hoping and dreaming a little bit more. So, you know, things aren't tight. Plus there are taxes and all that stuff. And then people cleared 50,000. Go, GoFundMe takes a little percentage that, you know, I, whatever system they're using for PayPal or so on, they take a little bit. But, uh, people cleared 50,000. So that was not even in my mind as a possibility. So that, that was, uh, that was just mind blowing there. So that was really cool. Uh, I, I, re I receive a messages from people who couldn't drive relations for the truck. And I'm saying, what truck? And, uh, and uh, finally, one of them responded to say, David, uh, raising the money. And uh, so, like when I logged in, it was already passing the 25,000. And uh, yeah, I, it was really a big blessing, guys. You cannot believe it, uh, how much God going to use this truck to go to everywhere we can to reach out to more Muslims, to give out gospel. You are... Hey, thank George. you so much. Hey, George. You thank you, David. Uh, David, you, you, are, you are a blessing to our ministry, brother. Thank you so much. Well, keep in mind, I didn't actually do anything. Uh, I just made a video. It, took, it was a 15-minute video. I posted it. Other than that, um, I didn't even make the GoFundMe. My wife did that. So my entire contribution has been a 15-minute video that, uh, that I made. Other than that, these are the, uh, these are the people who... Um, these are the people who've been contributing here. And uh, so, yeah, it was awesome. And some of the people are saying they're contributing to... Get you better internet, George. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> they, they saw it going out. So, uh, uh, yeah. And Stephen Atkins here said, uh, uh, I've been in the car with George and there was room for people or literature, but not both. Well, so George isn't going to have that. George isn't going to have that that problem anymore. Anyway, so guys, you everyone blew my mind uh, by contributing more than, than what we needed. There was one very strange person in the comments over on uh, GoFundMe who was just losing her mind that people were still donating beyond what we had asked. Um, she kept, uh, she was accusing people of being greedy, which is like, like we're being greedy by taking, by taking over and beyond what we had asked. Um, very strange situation, right? I'm the one who was controlling the GoFundMe because, you know, I was telling my wife, hey, set up a GoFundMe and it, but it's connected to our account. We're not taking a dime out of it. So George's ministry is getting the funds, but he's not controlling it. So you can't accuse him of being greedy. And notice, I mean, it would be very strange to be say, wow, we want, we're greedy for more materials to go to more Muslims. We're really greedy for, gosh, guys, uh, the real story, the real story of the day is generosity and people wanting to contribute to an awesome, awesome uh, ministry. And so, yeah, I know that lots of materials will be going to uh, tons of Muslims for a long time. Anywho, um, I said in the video announcement that I would be giving out uh, uh, giving out prizes to the top donors, but also to some random donors, right? Uh, because we know there, there are people who can just say, hey, here's $2,500 and stuff like that. And there are other people who $5 is a sacrifice. So uh, we wanted to give, you know, to both. So uh, basically everyone who gave $1,000 or more, and there were a bunch because, again, it was like $50,000. Um, I'm going to be, I was going to announce it here and give you my contact info so that you could contact me, but uh, I looked on GoFundMe, and there is a way for me to contact you. I don't have your email address, but I can send you a thank you message. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you gave more than, a if you gave $1,000 or more, uh, 
when you see a thank you popping up again, I think George has already been sending out thank yous and so on. But when you see a, a thank you pop up again, that's some info. And um, you can you, uh, you'll have a couple options of uh, of of random prizes that I'm that I'm giving out just because I like to, you know, I, I know you didn't do this to get a prize. I know you didn't contribute to get a prize, but it is kind of fun. And also, uh, ran, uh, you know, uh, other people, uh, just, just, you know, people who, um, uh, don't know, don't know if you're getting a prize or not I'm going to be giving out some random prizes. So if you see another thank you pop up, that means you're randomly selected. And that will happen by me going to a list of the donations and kind of pointing pointing to people randomly, sending them a message. But your options, I'll put this in here. Um, I mentioned that I have copies of a bunch of Nabil's books and they're cool because they're signed. I think I only have one copy of Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus left because um, lots of people... Uh, I've given them out to people before and almost everyone wants a copy of Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. So I have a bunch still of... When I say a bunch, I mean probably... 18 or 20 uh, copies of Nabil's other books, um, No God But One and Answering Jihad. So uh, I can't give everyone a copy of Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, autographed by Nabil. But um, I have copies of his book. So you have the option of you can pick a book. I'll, I'll get, send you an email. You can pick a book. Uh, just give me your address. I'll send you I'll send you an autographed copy of one of Nabil's books. Or if you are, some people are fans of Islamicize Me, some people are not fans of Islamicize Me. Just so, you, just so you all know, George was in Islamicize Me, but he didn't exactly know what he was getting into. We just said, hey, we need someone to appear as a Muslim for this skit, and then he's going to be a convert to Christianity later. And so we recorded those scenes with George. I lost you for a second here, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, you hear me now? All right. So uh, anyway, George was in. George was in Islamicize Me, and he agreed to do it really quickly just because, you know, I've been working with him for years, and he always has me come out and speak at conferences and stuff. What's that? He, he, he text messaged me, are you available in these days? And I text message you back. I say, David, you never say no to me. I would not say no to you. What do you want? After I read the message after that, <laughs> I have no way to back out of it now. But it, it was really awesome. Yeah, so uh, so that's how George ended up in Islamicize Me. Um, but for you fans of Islamicize Me, some people don't like it. Some people like, you know, uh, uh, normal videos and so on. But for people who did like Islamicize Me, if you want one of the props from the video, something uh, you saw in the series, Vocab saved everything that we used in the series. It's all in a closet in Vocab's house. So if you want a prop from the video um, or a signed prop, we'd be happy to, to sign oh, those for you. Of course, the backpack, right? Uh I could probably get the back. I'm, I'm so I'm I'm so happy. By the way, things turned out with the truck. I probably I'll probably just strong arm the backpack from vocab and uh, send it oh, someone oh. if if someone wanted the magic backpack. And jo yeah, you're the one who gave us the magic backpack in the in the in the series. Yeah, yeah. So uh, those uh, those are some of the things. Also, I'm gonna I decided to add a couple of others. Um, I have merch now. I have some some various Act 17 apologetic shirts. If you want one of those, I'll send you one of those. Or if there's a special video topic you'd like me to cover with within reason, right? Don't be like, I want you to make a video about ponies. You know, I don't, I don't care about ponies. Uh, so, but if you have a, a video topic and that's what you'd like me to do, then that would be an option as well. So those are uh, those are the those are the perks that I'll be going. So check your emails if you contributed to um, to George's truck and be giving out some uh, some special special prizes. Um, all right, so that should be about it. So guys, uh, George's ministry website that's in the description box um, lots of people are lots of people are talking they're contributing on super chat to, to go to george but there's a way to donate directly to your ministry on on your website uh yes or if they text message me i can send them the link as well okay so guys um this is George Sayeg. George Sayeg came here from the Sudan, found out now he's allowed to uh, talk about Islam and preach the gospel all he wants uh, here in America. And not a lot of people who've taken advantage of the freedom he has here in the United States, like Pastor George Sayeg. And so uh, he's dedicated his life to reaching Muslims, going to Muslim gatherings, going to mosques, wherever there are Muslims assembled. George is showing up. He's training other Christians to uh, talk to them, to reach out to Muslims. And I think this is what we need in the church. 
And so if you want a good ministry to contribute to, here's one. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, guys, even if you're like my supporters on Patreon or something like that, if you would rather support George's ministry, by all means, right? By all means, delete your Patreon contribution to me and you can you can support George's ministry. I'm totally fine with that. That would be that would be really cool. So, uh, yeah, because, you know, it, it takes a lot, right? Traveling. My, my tra main desire is to see you guys using what you're learning from David. Use it in action to go out in the streets to share the gospel with these people. Please, if you want to start your own ministry wherever you are, please contact me. I would love to help you to start an outreach in your home church. I would be more than happy to come. I will bring David with me. We can come and do training in your church and uh, recruit more people to reach out to Muslims in your community. We want to see in every county, in every city across the United States, a, a ministry reaching out to the local mis Muslims. Mm -hmm. These people coming, seeking freedom. The only way they can be free indeed is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Would you please use the gift that God giving you to share the gospel with these people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and guys, I just want to say, you know, it's it's easy to look around at, at terrorist attacks and um, just the rapid spread of Islam, primarily through birth rates. It's easy to look at all of that and look at the situation of our leaders constantly praising Islam and polit you know politicians, journalists, uh, Hollywood actors, the education system, everyone praising Islam and defending it when we know what's going on with Islam. It's easy to get discouraged, but no generation has ever had the kinds of opportunities that we have right now to reach okay. Muslims with the gospel. No one has ever had this these kinds of opportunities. 14 centuries worth of Christians who have been interacting with Muslims couldn't have dreamed of the kinds of opportunities that we have. That there will be places uh, like the United States where you are, where there will be uh, hundreds of Muslims gathered in a mosque and Christians are protected to go up and talk to them. Um, also, you know, with 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 the internet that we can reach Muslims in their own countries, but that that's what we need, right? Like, like I'm doing it primarily on the internet. George is doing it primarily going out to mosques and so on, uh, going across the country. But basically everyone in all areas needs to be reaching out to Muslims, reaching out to them with the gospel. Uh, again, no, no one could have dreamed of a situation where you can, you know, you could pick up your cell phone and talk to a Muslim in Saudi Arabia on a social media platform. Uh, that's th this is what our generation have. Our ge our generation has these kinds of opportunities, and uh, everyone should be doing something. You should either be doing this in some way, uh, or you you could be you could be supporting people who do supporting ministries uh, like George's ministry. All right, so thank you for joining me here, George. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you. Yep, and I'll uh, I'll be with you this summer. And for everyone else who's watching, I will be uh, going. I have a video. Uh, Tomorrow, I'll be posting a video about uh, John Walker Lint, who was uh, the American Taliban terrorist who uh, was just released today. And then live streaming, I'll be back Saturday night. I'll have a couple of friends with me live on Saturday. So see you all then. God bless everyone. God bless you.